Hello, welcome uh, to the Vicky Girl Travels podcast, the show for black women who want more out of life and to live it as they see fit. The message here is all about defying convention, embracing adventure, and regretting absolutely nothing. I'm your host, Adelia Borachade of VickyGirlTravelsTheWorld.com. <laughs> and as you can probably hear, this episode is a little different. Day in the life. <laughs> <laughs> than uh, the usual episodes. Um, today we're doing something very special. Uh, we're introducing a new type of episode called Tea Time with Ivana. We got it. Um, and for these episodes, we'll do them periodically. For these episodes, I will be joined by my friend and life and leadership coach extraordinaire, the one, the only, Ivana Robinson. Um, these episodes are really an extension of what I'm already talking about here on the Picky Girl Travels podcast. We're, you know, going to be talking about what it means to live life on your terms and what it takes to find out who you are, what do you want. So, hope y'all enjoy it. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about friendship. Yes. Because as I mentioned, we are friends. We are. (laughs) And, um, I okay, for those of you who might be new and may not be familiar with Ivana Robinson. She was a previous guest on the podcast where we talked about what was the title of that episode? I don't know what the title was, but we talked about me moving to Belgium. No, 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 no. That was when you were just on the YouTube YouTube channel. channel. Well, let's search. Uh, Being your best self. Ah, okay. All right. So we talked about being your best self. So she's She's been on the show before. We are friends. Um, As I mentioned, she's a life and leadership coach, so she has some uh, special expertise (laughs) in these areas. She, like myself, is living a life she loves. She's living life on her terms. So who who better to have these conversations with? And so um, when I... When we discussed doing this, the topic she wanted to talk about was friendship. Yeah. I know, one, obviously because the two of us are friends, um, and I think that happened fairly organically, um, but I think sometimes we forget the community aspect when it comes to living life of our dreams, um, not holding on to people just because they've been there for a long time or because you're related to them but really what it means to have people who are on your team and you know we are fortunate enough to live in the same place yeah (laughs) but I know we also both have team members who don't live here and what it is like to maintain friendships and make friends as an adult because I think that is a topic that comes up a lot as people are moving around whether that's outside of the U.S. or not of how do you make friends as an adult and what it's like to do so. Um, and I would also think why, why you should put some effort and energy into uh, creating new friendships. Yeah, and I think being intentional about maintaining the ones that are worth maintaining. Um, but yeah, having your people and is a really important process of finding out who you are. Um, and, you know, people help you stay grounded to help, to help give you different perspectives. Um, but, you know, once again, I just thought about you grounding me. And I was trying to think of, I was, I was trying to think of an example of where you were like, I said something and Ivana was like, but you know you're not going to do that. Or who are you lying to? You know you're not going to follow through on that. She keeps me humble. You know, you know, it's the same thing because I technically came up with this idea months ago and I just kind of let it go (laughs) until earlier this week when Adelia was like, so remember that video idea you had? When are we doing that? I don't know. Until here we are. So that's that's what we do. Um, I think a great place to start is how did you and I meet? How, How did this friendship come to be? 
I am interested. I feel like I always tell this story. <laughs> Is it my turn to tell yeah, it? Yeah, I feel like I want to hear your version of events because, you know, two people can experience the same thing and remember yeah, it very fair differently. Enough. So I'm, I'm curious. Fair enough. Share that story, please. Um, I feel like it's a very easy story. So you and I had technically been connected via Facebook, I think via Roxanne. Yes. Through the, the Brothers and Sisters Mexico City group. Um, but that was months, maybe I was, a year before yeah, I... Yeah, I was still living in China. Yeah, it was definitely before I moved to Mexico City. Um, so we had chatted on Facebook or whatever. But then, I guess when I was moving here in 2021... Someone else had reached out in the group saying they were coming to Mexico City. Did anyone want to grab drinks on this particular day? You said yes. I think you were actually on the plane. Well, no, with her. I thought I was on the plane with her because she posted something in the Brothers and Sisters of Mexico City group, okay. and I was like, I'm in, I'm, a, I'm in row, you know, whatever seat, whatever. I thought we were on the plane, yeah. and then that's how she ended up reaching out to me. Because I, I guess I connected by accident. Uh, okay. Well, I just remember there being a post about getting drinks on this particular night. And it happened to be the day that I was arriving in Mexico City for good. So I, you know, I said yes. And I literally, like, dropped off my stuff at my Airbnb and then left to go meet you two for drinks. Um, and I don't think she lives here. No, she was... Playa? Was she, she, was, she was contemplating uh, between Playa del Carmen and Mexico City because mm -hmm. um, that was her first time, I think, visiting Mexico City. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. And eventually she ended up living in Playa. Right. Another former podcast guest. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, but we, we all had drinks together. It was a great time. Um, and then I think you friended me officially on Facebook yes. after. Yes. Um, now, did you remember that we had been connected by Roxanne? Because I did not. I did remember that. Okay, I did not. I don't forget it. I went, I think I friended you and you accepted. And that's a big deal because I don't friend people on Facebook. I don't either. <laughs> Hence why we had spoken before but weren't actually <laughs> friends on Facebook. Yes. Um, that's just not, like, if you want to be my friend, you are welcome to friend me. Now, will I accept it? That's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. But, and then I went to message you to kind of like just check in to see how you work. And then I find this whole conversation and I was like, oh, that's the girl Roxanne connected me with. <laughs> so no, I did not remember that. Yes. And I think we then made plans to get dinner or something. Yes. Yes. Because we went, we ended up at the hamburger place. We went place. to that burger place, right? Because there was the secret burger place that we could not figure out, and so we went around the corner to a legitimate restaurant. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and I, th I feel like we just, I don't know. When you know, you know. Yeah, no, because I, I can remember as as the three of us were were talking, and the conversations were very varied. Um, it was about you know like leaving the U.S why Mexico was a good choice up to like all kinds of things yeah. and I just remember hearing like your thoughts on things and I was like I want to know her <laughs> which y'all know I'm an introvert I that's also not like I don't go around picking up friends that's that's not how I get down yeah. so I made an effort I'm also an introvert but I feel like I do pick up friends oh yeah you you're more extroverted than I am by no means an extrovert no but of the two of us yeah you are more extroverted and I think it's because in in certain ways of like I have lived in other places particularly a place where I did not know anybody didn't know the language things like that to where you need somebody even if it's a short term like we are just friends in this location and I don't talk to you every right but you need like you just need you, people. You still need people. This, this, and that's something I think as people who have lived and grown up in the United States, which is a very individualistic culture, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, you know, like 
I don't want to say move in silence, but it's a lot of like, don't let people know the plan, yeah. keep your business to yourself. Which is wild to me. Like, I get it in a general sense, but like, if I can't share my deepest dreams with my besties, why are you my bestie? Are you my bestie? That's really <laughs> like, the I question. Think that's, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Because um, I think that is something that comes up of like, as you are figuring out who you are, but also as you're moving around, as you're trying to live this life of your dreams, whatever that kind of looks like, your friendships do evolve. Some, not everyone is going to continue on the journey with you, but the idea that like no one can, yeah, is an interesting thing. So I'd love to know, what is your longest friendship? Renee comes to mind because basically, but we've been friends since I was an adult. There are people who have known you. Longer. Yes, people I have known longer, but she and I met in, or were introduced to each other in 1994. <laughs> Y'all see that face? I wasn't gonna say it. That's the face it. your 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 millennial friend makes when they do the math and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I wasn't even in elementary school then." I was not. <laughs> no. So I'm trying to think. Do because like I am still Facebook friends with somebody who I literally met months after I was born. Right. But, but are you like, calling on them in yeah, your time of need? Are you sharing special moments, celebratory or not? No, no. So right now, so what is that? 94 is 29, 29. years? Because I was three. <laughs> <laughs> what is your oldest friendship? Um, my best friend Kelly. We've known each other. Like We went to the same school starting when I was in second grade, but we became friends in like sixth grade, so that's like 12. Like I remember we went to each other's 13th birthday parties and that was some time. Um, so that would be like 19 years. And see, and I wonder, <laughs> cause as some of y'all know, I got married when I was 19. Uh, I am an introvert, so who does not like to use the phone? Yeah. So I wonder, one, had I not gotten married and then kind of like formed this other life, would I have held on to more of those people from the earlier parts of my life? Also, like, because did y'all met? in elementary school mm -hmm. and then continued to go to the same school? Yeah, so we went, our school was elementary and middle together. Um, and ultimately, I think what happened was we both went through friendship breakups in like fifth and sixth grade. <laughs> so I think we were kind of searching for new people. Um, because I think about that, like we don't necessarily have a whole lot in common. She's very athletic. She loves outside. She loves a dog. Not you. I don't like none of that. Okay, um, <laughs> but we do have similar tastes, I think, in, in like the world of like books and movies and like the, the way in which we want to live our lives, even though that functionally looks different. Uh huh. Um, you know, I think, and I also think we value friendship, which I think is why we've been able to stay friends for so long. Um, cause I left Colorado, you know, to, after, after high school and she stayed there. She stayed out West. I did eventually move back West for a bit, but like, this is a friendship that has lasted not just over time, but over distance. Well, that's what I was wondering, but I, I definitely am more intentional about friendships mm -hmm. now. Like I said, I met you and I was like, I want to be her friend. And so the introverted me was like, how do I do that? Let me friend her on Facebook. Like, yeah. <laughs> Cause as you were saying about like having to seek out people, like when I moved to Mexico city the first time, it didn't, when I lived in Honduras before that, my friends in Honduras were the people I worked with. Yeah. 
when I lived in China. My friends in China were the people I worked with. Mm -hmm. Part of that was a language thing, but part of that was, you know, proximity and all of that. But I moved to Mexico on my own. Mm -hmm. There was no job. Right. There were no work friends. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to, it wasn't a conscious thing that I did, but I did have to, like, put in more effort right. to, meet people. to meet people and get to know people to see if I wanted to hang out with them or not. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, similarly, I moved to Belgium for a job. So I'm not going to say there was a built-in <laughs> like friendship thing because it was still my, the company I worked with, like, was mostly Belgian. And culturally, they are very welcoming like they would help me do anything they would translate my mail for me like I could ask for help in the things that I needed but they're they're friends with the people that they have grown up with in the town that they come from like it wasn't going to be you know we're gonna go get drinks after work stereotypically um I do have friends who are Belgian who I still talk with and connect with um but it was just a different situation um and then I didn't I also did not speak any French or Dutch and so that's also a different not that I couldn't you know talk to people but English is, is fairly spoken. spoken there yeah widely spoken there but um, yeah I did kind of have to put myself out there in a way that I don't know that I did before in terms of just being willing to be like do you want to get a drink do you want to get a coffee do you do you want to do a thing um, to, to, your, to that point, to find my people, um, my friend Alexia, we parked our cars in the same parking garage and were s needed to switch parking spots, but somehow kept missing each other. Like, we couldn't figure it out. And so finally, the guy who owns the parking garage, like, gave us each other's phone number so that we could connect and do that. And I'm like, well, clearly she lives in this neighborhood. If she's parking in this building, too, so. I'm going to just ask her if she wants to get a drink. Didn't know what she looked like. I was just like, she texts like a young person. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask. <laughs> I'm laughing partially because I'm thinking like, do I, I don't text like a young person. Like if somebody got a text from me, it would probably tell my age immediately, you know, punctuation, full sentences, things spelled correctly. Yeah, I don't know. It's something about it. I was like, oh, I feel like we're probably close enough in age. And so I just went for it because one, I don't know what this person looks like. So the worst that happens is she says no, but I don't know who she, you know. Yeah, I, you don't know who she is. The level of rejection was just very low to me. Um, <laughs> you know, or I made friends with a tour guide. You know, I was like, oh, I'm living here now. And he's like, cool, let's hang out. Find me on Facebook. And I was like, okay. Um, and I think it was because I'm like, one, one, because I had nothing to lose. And the likelihood I see these people again, if I don't want to see them, again, it's very low. Um, and so it was just me like putting myself out there. Not everything, you know, like I said, not every person that I met or hung out with is someone that I have maintained contact with or even maintained contact with when I was living there. But finding people to do things with or, you know, explore to have conversations with, I think, especially being you know, a native English speaker in a place is sometimes I need to just express myself how I need to express myself. And you can't always do that with someone where English is not necessarily their first language. I don't want to have to explain my colloquialisms. So like I still needed to find other people I could have certain conversations with or even just to share different experiences coming from a similar culture yeah. of being like, this is weird to you right is it just me right like being open like y'all do what you do but I think sometimes you're like I just need to know that I'm not crazy like someone else is picking up on these things too and finds that interesting um you know I think when you are moving and kind of like I don't know you kind of have different identities in the places you're in so it probably also makes somewhat of a difference I was just thinking that while while outside of the U.S., I didn't have, like, when we think about making friends at a younger age, a lot of that is born of proximity. You live in my neighborhood, you go to my school. Yeah. And so, you know, living abroad, that looked different for me. But I think about when I made the decision that, like, 
I wanted to change my life and I wanted to live it the way I wanted to live it. Yeah. Like, how did that impact? I don't know how I made friends or how I looked at my friendship relationships. Because yeah. I think I think it became. I was gonna say maybe it became more important then, but maybe that's because I also got a divorce around that same time. And you know, you look around at like, oh, I gotta reevaluate these who's, people. Who's in my circle? Who's, who's on, on my team? team? Who's on his team? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I think. I, I think when you are doing things on your own terms, your tolerance for bullshit goes way down. Absolutely. I think, and I think it becomes easier to recognize who your people are. True. Because I know who I am and I know the values that I want the people around me to embody. And so it is easier for me to say like, yes, you or yes, that, or even to understand the role that someone plays in your life, right? Because even the idea of like a best friend, like that's a tier that is separate from like, I have friends who it's like, I'm not necessarily out here sharing secrets all the time, but like they're fun to do stuff with, Yes. right? Like <laughs> they're cool to hang out with or, you know, friendships that are local and that I do have access to see you all the time or to talk to you all the time differently than my friends who still live stateside or my best friend Justin who lives in Poland, right? Our, our friendship looks different because of distance. It looks different. He's now married with a child. So the way my schedule is a lot different, a lot more free than, than that, right? So like, it takes more intention, I think, to maintain those friendships of saying, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. Let's have a phone call or let me just send you this text. Or even, you know, I love a good meme. That's how I keep in contact with a lot of people. Just this meme made me think of you, and that's fun. But it has to be a little more intentional than here, where like I can literally just be like, "Hey, are you busy? Want to go eat something?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't need to be a plan in the same way. Yeah. You said something about like knowing who you are. Yes. Anybody who has listened to the podcast, watched the podcast, surely has heard the story about like how I had to figure out who the hell I was or yeah. be reminded mm -hmm. of who I was. That's, I oh, that's a lot of it. And I think that's true for all of us. Of I think we come into this world knowing exactly who we are. And it is the world and our parents and <laughs> all the things who then tell us, no, not that. Yeah. Right. And, and like you need to fit into this type of box in order to be successful, in order to be happy, in order to be loved even. Right. And I think we see that a lot as there are a lot of conversations, particularly in, in the U.S. around trans kids or uh, gay kids. And it's like, well, how would you know? And it's like, we know a lot of things. We know a lot of things when we come into this. We may not have the language for it. That's, that's. Right? But <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> you know exactly, I think, who you are and what feels right for you. But then the world tells you that's not a thing or that is not appropriate. And so we've learned how to function yes. in a way that is more palatable to other people. But that is exhausting. And that functioning sometimes includes kind of taking who we are, shoving that down, and I don't want to say pretending to be somebody else, but that's in essence what yeah. it is. You, you put on what is deemed appropriate uh, for you as a person your age, as a woman, as a black person, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and like you said, maintaining that yeah. is hard and exhausting and I got tired of maintaining it and was like fuck all this yeah <laughs> the facade has to I'm go. gonna be yeah. me um where was I going with that I don't know I, I said something that you said that I said <laughs> I, about Finding who you are. Oh, knowing who yeah. you knowing are. Who you so are. yes, I was gonna ask, given your youth, like you, and that's one of the things that I really like about you, I admire about you, is that you are as young as you are and have a really good bead on who you are. 
Yeah. Was that like always like that? No. No. I mean, I grew up in the suburbs of Colorado for my elementary, middle school days. I was the only black child, like the only black student at my school um, for a good chunk of that time. And yeah, I don't know. I always felt like I didn't fully, fit. I did not fit in at school <laughs> in, in, in a lot of ways. I did in many ways, but then I also never felt like I fit in with my family in many ways. And so there was this idea of like, I need to be a certain way in order to kind of find my people or like be my, I don't know. There, there was something, there was definitely something there. And I think, you know, when you're living at home and under, you know, with your parents or grandparents or whatever, you kind of have to go along to get along <laughs> in Very many true. ways. Very true. And so I think there was a lot of that, of knowing that what was going on and what the people around me were doing did not completely gel with who I was, but also not having the space to really figure out who that person was. Um, at the same time, I saw, like, my mother and, like, other women in my life who were kind of living their life according to what they were, quote-unquote, supposed to do, according to you know what what placated other people and I didn't want that <laughs> like I just saw things and I just knew I didn't want that life even if I didn't fully understand how to not have that life or what I needed to do differently um I knew that much and I think leaving the state for school was really important to that um my mom was also someone who really, like, wanted me to have experiences that she didn't get to have. So, like, I went to a school where we got to go to Europe in the eighth grade. And, like, getting to experience another, other cultures and the world, like, firsthand, I think just opened me up to, like, so many things are possible here. Um, and so I think being away and sort of having to, being in a world where I get to sort of decide who I am. Um, it still took some time because I was still looking for like stability, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like moving somewhere and like, oh, can I afford to be here? Can I afford to, to have any sort of a life? And I think as I sort of, sort of between like 25 and 30 is where I was like, I'm working real hard and I don't feel like I'm getting what I need to be getting out of this. Like emotionally, my life is too hard. <laughs> And I don't think this is what your 20s are supposed to be. But again, to be in your 20s and be able to pinpoint that, I think is rare. Yeah. I mean, I know I sure as hell couldn't do it in my 20s, but I had a lot of shit going on. <laughs> um, but I do still think that's rare, so. Yeah. I don't know. And I think it is my love for travel that kind of helped keep me sort of at least asking questions. I didn't always have the answers, but being open to the idea that things could be different, that they did not have to be exactly the way that I've seen before. Mm -hmm. I had other options. Um, and I think opening myself up to the idea that, of like redefining what failure was. I think that was really it for me in that way. Um, you know, so like I moved home for a little bit. Like, and it was okay. It <laughs> and it was, was okay, okay, and it helped me get to, to Mexico, which is what I wanted and doing things I wanted to do. But I think it kind of comes back to not needing to do everything on my own, of leaning on my village. So, like, I moved in with Kelly, my best friend, for, you know, about a year or so. And, you know, having that space to be where I didn't need to be anything other than what I was and figuring that out. Um, that I don't know that I would have gotten to do in the same way if I did not have a friendship like that. I like, I like to hear you say leaning on your village because I feel like in American culture, the only time we talk about the village and getting help from the village is with raising children. And that can very much get people to thinking like, that that's what the village is for and that if I, the individual, mm -hmm. need support, need the help of a village, you're asking something you should, for something you shouldn't, you're being selfish. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're telling you the village is for you too. 
yeah, we all have to be, and not from a place of obligation, but being in this because we are in this together, because we love each other, because... We gotta talk louder. We <laughs> <laughs> Because we love each other, because we really want the best for each other, regardless of if it's the same thing that we want for ourselves. Right? Like I said, my best friend Kelly, we are very different human beings. <laughs> you know? Um, but we want the best for each other on on that person's terms, right? Like, she wants the best for me as I'm out here living in Mexico and doing that kind of thing, right? And I want the best for her in what it, when what it is that she wants, right? It's not my agenda for her, but supporting her and her agenda for her. Um, and I think we sometimes think that when people support us, they need to completely understand what it is that we're doing or, you know, they need to be doing it too. And I think it is helpful to have people in your circle who are doing the things that you were doing and are maybe just a little further along, you know, on that path. But that's not necessarily what support looks like. It can, it can just be so many things. It can be, I know that I will never be homeless and hungry because I will go back to Colorado and <laughs> things go wrong, right? And, and I have somewhere to, to stay. I have people who will help me get on my feet, right? Even if they are not also out here as entrepreneurs or living in other places. Um, and so thinking about or expanding the idea of what support can look like for you. I guess what I, this is maybe past that, but I was gonna ask like, how would you say your friendship with Renee has evolved? Like, is there, like, a pre-divorce, post-divorce, or, like, um, a, in I think, the U.S., I, outside I, the U.S.? I think there is definitely a pre-divorce, post-divorce, uh, because the vast majority of the time uh, we've known each other. I was her f friend's wife. That's how we met. Okay. Uh, which, <laughs> you get a divorce, that, that really yeah. shakes things up. Um, what was the first part of that question? How has your friendship evolved? Oh, how has it evolved? When, when I go to visit her, or we're traveling somewhere, and people ask about like how we've met. She, this is why I wanted you to tell the story because it's interesting to hear. Hearing her tell it, he just kind of said, "Here, y'all be friends." <laughs> I don't quite remember it like that, okay. but from her point of view, as he was her friend, right. they had gone to high school together. I, I, I can see that. Um, and, you know, like, our friendship grew to where, you know, like, we probably both preferred each other yeah. to him uh, long before I got a divorce. But <laughs> there is a definite change in things after the divorce. And that's also because I returned back to who I was. And so she was friends with a new person. Okay. Yeah. Because she used to make that comment of, I, I know Adelia, what my last name used to be. But she was like, Adelia Borshaw, they, I don't, I don't know, know her. That. She's she's wild. <laughs> she's like, oh, so this is who you are. So it is different in, in for several reasons, but that's also part of it because I, I am so much different. I'm back to who I was all along and who I forgot who I was. But um, the nature of that friendship changed and it's not uncommon for us to be somewhere and people be like, are y'all sisters? And we kind of be like, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that is interesting. I also find it hilarious that you got her in the divorce. Yes, and I, 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 <laughs> I said that. I was like, yeah, like that's of, cause when I was talking about earlier, like who your people are, who your circle is, of course that changes with the divorce. And of all the people who were in our overlapping circles, she's pretty much the only one I got. Yeah. Everybody else was on his team, which yeah. is fine. I still have the superior team, but uh, yeah, that's how it, it worked out. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> but I think is really indicative of your relationship being based in something bigger than proximity. Yes. Bigger than, I don't know, I'm here, you here. <laughs> I'm like, I have no one else to talk to, so I would talk to you <laughs> kind of thing. Um, 
but really being based, like I said, in those in those shared values, right? Because even as you as a person have evolved, right, th- those things still stay true. Yes. Yes. And, you know, that's... You know I love a value, okay? Like, this is... I'm all about, what are your values? Yes. Because if you center your decisions or your, you know, your circle in those things, you just can't go wrong. Not to say everything goes right all the time, but, like, you will feel secure in the things that you are doing. So let's let's dig into that because, okay. yes, you do love a value. <laughs> um, and <laughs> there are times when I will say things to Ivana and she's like, but does that align with your values? <laughs> so how, like if I'm watching this or yeah. I'm hearing this conversation and I'm wanting to build my village, I want to make some connections, I want to be in community with folks, how do I do that? How do I make sure that these people I'm trying to befriend are in alignment with my values? I think the easiest thing is how do you feel when you are around this person? How do you feel after you have spent time with this person? If you feel depleted and drained and exhausted and there's someone you can only be around, you know, once every couple of months, it's not for you. Okay, for whatever reason, like I don't even think you need to, to know what your values are, but like this, no, <laughs> that, that person's not for you. If you're not clear, that tells you. <laughs> that in and of itself, because your people in your village are people who build you up in a variety of ways. So like you enjoy being around them, you feel better, you feel like, you know, a version of your best self when you are with this person. Um, as well as like not, and it doesn't feel one side right like you would you enjoy each other's company yes yes <laughs> right and 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 i would say in in maybe not in all forms but in many forms is ideal of like you know you can hang out on the couch but you can also maybe like go out and do a thing um and someone who is keeping your how do i want to say where your relationship is reciprocal but not necessarily transactional Yes. Like, if you feel like you need to do something for that person because they did something for you or they're like, you owe me. No. That's not it. No. That's not it. it. You know, we, community is about, it's a circle. And so we both have to be giving. We both have to be taking sounds bad. But, like, I have to allow you to help me. Just like I have to be offering help, like, in order for that circle to continue to go and to build. You have to, as Stephanie Perry said, you have to give people the opportunity to be a friend to you. Yes. To support you. That's that's also being uh, being a friend to someone is offering support and helping them, but you also have to allow people to do that for right. you. you know, or else you break the chain, and it doesn't work And it's anymore. not a circle anymore. No. Those are, I think, the easy ways to know. Um, you know, and I think in terms of meeting new people, it's go do the things that you like to do, and then you talk to people who are also doing this thing. That's the hard part. Now... I'm not going to say you just need to be talking to Annie and everybody. I'm a person. I like to feel out the situation, right? Who do I think might be cool? Who is maybe making the same faces at things that I make? <laughs> you know, they might be cool. Let me go talk to them. Maybe we can. Because just because they're at the event right, does not make them automatically no, your person. No, no. And you may not immediately know that. So it's, there's also, once again, no harm in just saying, hey... Do you want to grab a coffee after this or do you want to whatever low stakes <laughs> very low stakes just to get to know someone better but you at least have a conversation starter because you have this shared interest or thing um yeah i feel like being black outside of the or black american like outside that's, the u.s that's your that opener right is there the opener <laughs> you know like the way in which you can just talk to somebody because they are also black <laughs> Because there is, a, down. there is a thing you share. Yeah. Already. Yeah. So finding just, just easy, easy ways to connect with people to kind of evaluate if this could be someone that you're into. Um, yeah, because I think it is. It just takes some intention to find 
you know, your people, and then to maintain the friendships that are worth maintaining. Maintaining the friendships that are worth maintaining. I kind of want to sit with that for a moment. Because um, all friendships are, okay, <laughs> I'm not saying you need to cut people off, but let's say, I, because of the line of work I'm in, I get a lot of women who are looking to move abroad, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that come up a lot in those conversations is about like maintaining the friendships of the people who stayed home. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's some people who are like, well, they ain't come to see me, I'm gonna cut them off, blah, blah, blah. And just because you are not geographically in the same place with those people. That's not a reason to no longer maintain that relationship. No. Um, like Renee and I, very uh, as I have been flitting all over the world, you know, I just get a text, hey, where are you? Yep. Mm -hmm. And depending where it is, like we, she comes where I am, I go where she is, or we figure out some place in the middle where we can meet up. So like that, maintaining that relationship because that's a relationship that works looks different but yes I'm also not we're not saying you just got to cut folks off because they're not living the new life that you're living right and I think even the, the example you give of like they didn't come visit you are they someone who would have like are they a traveler like I don't you know I have friends who I know regardless of where I live we will meet up or you know they will come visit me I will go visit them but that's because that's naturally something they do right um, you know I like I said I left Colorado moved to DC I went to Belgium for a bit and like Kelly has visited me in those places Kelly moved to Oklahoma did I go to Oklahoma no but when I was in in Texas for work we met up in Dallas okay like we <laughs> Figured that out. I wasn't. I wasn't going. To, I wasn't going. To I don't think anybody's she, gonna hold that against you. No, she. She was like, "Don't come here." Um, but to that point, our friendship looks very different. She's not someone I talk to every day. She also has a young child. Like, it just looks different. But like, I know that if I need her, right, or vice versa, that that friendship is there, right? Um, and it, it just looks. To your point, it looks different. It feels different. Of I may not talk to you every day, but when we do talk, it is right back to where we were and how, you know, how we connect. And it's like we've never missed a beat. Um, yes. And letting go of the, if maintaining the relationship is draining to you, it's yeah. what have you, and letting go of those friendships that you know, just aren't worth maintaining. And that could be for any number of reasons. Like, that doesn't make you a bad person. No. And I think knowing if a friendship is worth maintaining takes, because a lot of times we maintain, maintain friendships out of just time, of like, I've known you for a long time. And it's like, well, that's not a reason. <laughs> right, because we do change and evolve and our relationships have to change and evolve. Um, but sometimes it's about having a conversation of the way in which our relationship has functioned or is functioning does not work for me. Let us find, you know, some compromise, something in the middle. I think it is often worth having the conversation. Um, but, you know, that does not mean that it is always worth maintaining the friendship after that. Once again, you got to, it's got to be reciprocal. Um, and you have to feel good about it. Yeah. I can. I guess that's where we insert that that quote about, and then I just forgot the damn quote. Do you know who says the quote? No. What was it? Uh, about oh, about folks being in your life for a season. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And I think and I think you just have to be okay with that. Like not everyone is meant to be around all the time or in the same way or um, any of that. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think you have you have your people for a season, you have your people for a lifetime, and and it's okay. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not something you got to beat yourself up about. I don't think. No, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna beat myself up for much, <laughs> and I'm trying to bring that down to zero. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I think. 
I guess, sort of rounding this out of like friendship is important to me and to you just as a, a concept. Yes. <laughs> yes. It I is. think I think neither of us would be here without friendship. And I mean that in terms of our own, but also the chosen families that we were raised with as well. Um like we need we needed some of that. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, because I was I was wanting to talk about that and I was like, but then my mind went where it went. But that for both of us and in living these lives that we are living, the idea, the concept, the necessity of chosen family, uh -huh. because the families into which we were born, you know, I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a polite way to say this. They just did not offer everything that we needed. There you go. And But I honestly... Even if you have a, a family of origin that is maybe a little more together than either of ours, that is still true. Yes. Yes. Right? Like, you're just not going to get everything you need from, so like, you need to be building your, your village. Yeah. Because you need a village. You need a village. Yeah. Did we hit everything? I think we hit everything. Okay. Okay. So this is our first time filming Tea Time. Yes, in the world, we are aware that the airplanes are loud. Um, we will do our best to choose suitable locations in the future where that is not an issue. So you don't need to leave a comment about the sound of the airplanes because we are aware of that. But thank you for supporting the podcast despite my irregularity in posting new episodes. Um, I guess this is the part where I mention all the places you can follow. Like if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like it. That's a big deal. Subscribe to Picky Girl Travels the World. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are listening to this on like Spotify or Google Podcasts or whatever. Uh, can you leave a, a review? Can you rate it? That helps people find the show. Um, if this is your first time getting a taste of my girl here, <laughs> and you are like, I, you know, I need to know what she's up to. Where can the people find you? Um, well, I'm on Instagram at Ivana Run the World, um, or go to ivanarobinson.com. Join my newsletter. Um, every so often, I send out. I think informational and fun emails <laughs> and that is the best place to know what I'm doing and what's going on and all that good stuff yeah. so um, I would if you are watching this on YouTube uh, and I think on Spotify and I think in the description there is a link for you to leave a voice note if you enjoyed this particular episode in this format, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, except for the sound of the airplanes, because I am aware of that. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.